So, if you're new around here, I'm Jess, and unfortunately, this is John. Woo! And for the last six weeks, we've been exploring the north in our self-converted van. So far, we have loved our time in the Arctic, and it's an adventure we will never forget. It offers some of the most unique experiences and breathtaking scenery we have ever witnessed. But the Arctic is an unpredictable beast and conditions can change in the blink of an eye. So to travel here safely, you need to be prepared. So sit back and relax, because this one's not a thriller, but it's definitely a chiller. Welcome back. We've made it to Finland and this week you meet us in Finnish Lapland. Now we know that it's January and you're all done with Christmas, but we couldn't come all the way to Santa's house and not visit his village. So let's go see the big man's home. I tell you what, this place is a bit strange because it's that perfect, it almost feels a bit fake. It does, it? absolutely does. So like, there is a snowman here, he's about 20 foot tall, and you're standing next to him, you're like, this has got to be fake. No, 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 he's made of real snow. But even like the snow on the trees and the buildings and that, like, if you've ever been to like a Disneyland or a Legoland or something like that, it feels like that, it feels like it's all staged. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's real, it's just crazy. But I tell you what, if you told me 10 years ago when we lived in Australia, I'd be walking around Finnish Lapland, Santa's village in the Arctic Circle. I'd just be like laughing in your face, not thinking it would even be possible. So life's just crazy, isn't it? She's a bit fresh, but a few weeks ago, they had it down here at minus 40. Well, I have to say, this overtakes Lake Bled in the most beautiful place I've ever been. No way, it is beautiful. I don't know if it's topped Lake Bled for me though, but it is absolutely magical here. And it's one of those times that we do miss having kids, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Having kids here would just be unreal. Well, there's sleigh rides with reindeer, uh, there's fire pits. Every kid doesn't get like walk about, they just get pulled on the sleds <laughs> here as well, don't they? They do. And the Arctic Circle Line literally crosses through this place. So it is just an experience of a lifetime. But one thing I would say, say is the cold is brutal and I don't want to moan about the cold it's cold but the drone can capture where we are and things like that but nothing can capture how cold it is now can it and no, you absolutely. just had to go back to the van because Jess sort of well she froze up a bit really I, didn't did. you? <laughs> I broke down it's not just the van that struggles in this temperature and our filming equipment struggles as well our mic keeps dying and all kinds of things so yeah but you just get so cold that you kind of can't concentrate you can't function you can't focus you have to go and defrost for a bit and try yeah. again but yeah it's something to experience for sure so if you want to come here it's free to park and to walk around but there's a price attached to all of the activities as you'd expect but the sun has popped her beautiful little head up so let's go for a drive and see these beautiful Finnish scenes. John gave you a bit of behind the scenes with our editing and this week I thought I'd show you about our drone. So we use a DJI Mini 3 Pro and it's a nice simple little thing to use. And the way we get our driving shots is we'll just find a nice quiet road with lots of pull-ins, pull over, pop the drone up, John drives and I fly. Let's show you. Take off. So it's as simple as that really. 
What we always do is when we put the drone up, we have a bit of a scout around, make sure we've got a place to get it down, and also make sure we're not gonna run into any tunnels, because we nearly got ourselves into trouble in Switzerland, because there's tunnels everywhere, and that would have been good night drone. So, you know how I'm down with the kids? Me and Snoop Doggy Dog? No. Shit, I can't do it. <laughs> get back in the car. No, no get no. back in the car. No, ready, ready? Okay. Okay. Well, the temp is dropping like it's not hot. Ooh! <laughs> 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 oh, I'm such an idiot. What's going on here then, boy? Bit of frozen pipe action. <laughs> Um, it's been good up to now, we haven't had any issues, but um, I think minus 25 is a limit. So, yeah, we um, we came in, the pump runs a little bit, and then it just keeps pumping. So I'm taking it that all the, the pipe before the pump is frozen somewhere. So we just cranked her up and hopefully she'll thaw out anyway. Yeah, we've put the mattresses up against the back wall. The thing is, that back corner, this big box is stacked all the way up. So the airflow is not great there, is well, it? Well, when I put the fan in with the temperature control fan, um, that used to just come on every now and again, pull air in and then cut out. Whereas, um, well, all day today, it's been pretty much on all day, isn't it? Yeah. So. I'll tell you what though, once it's a frost soon, I want my dinner. <laughs> Nothing my Johnny boy can't sort. Good old Bosch called us tools to the rescue. So where I put the gas locker in, there's like a 10 centimetre gap down here and that's where I've rooted all my pipes. And I think the problem is there, there's no air circulation in that corner. So I think it just froze down there. So all I did was turn it on like that and then just obviously sucked in all the hot air from the room and blew it down there for a couple of minutes. Good as gold, so happy days. So I think I'm on for a promise, eh Jess? I think that you've almost redeemed yourself for the antics you played on Instagram last night. <laughs> if you don't follow us on Instagram, you'll have to go over there and see the stories. In fact, should we tell, show them now? No! <laughs> so this is another apology video. I shouldn't record Jess shaving her beard like that, should I? So I don't have a beard and secondly this is not a very sincere apology you're grinning you're just lucky I don't record her shaving a min so this is the second apology I don't know what happened that last clip we just cut out but uh, Jess doesn't have a beard she doesn't shave any other parts yes I do <laughs> I don't record her shaving any other parts no he will not be recording me shaving any other parts also I don't have a beard okay ladies after 30 randomly get some long hairs on their facial regions usually i would pluck them but the lighting in the van doesn't quite do the job so i thought i'll just cheat use his beard trimmers not happy so we've had quite a lot of questions whether we're staying warm in the van and obviously we've got the night heater fitted and the afterburner unit as well and i can't recommend that enough because what we do is we set the temperature to 21.5 during the day when we're in the back when we're driving we have it on about 15 and it's brilliant it's actually minus 28 degrees outside of the minute and it's 22 degrees in here so it's absolutely beautiful and the other day we met up with Alex Frude, Mr Arctic Man himself and obviously we got the mature stuff out of the way first and then after we did that he let me have a go on his thermal imaging camera and it was absolutely brilliant so we got both vans side by side and his is a steel panel van and obviously ours is the GRP box and where the joins are between his panels you could see the heat radiating through on the camera obviously he's insulated and everything like that but obviously that's just the weak point where it is it's almost like the stitching in your clothing whereas on the GRP box the only weak points really was the door frames and the window frames apart from that the rest of the body was fully sealed so it just does a really good job showing you the difference between the two vans so when we built this van I didn't want to put a max fan in the back as much as I love them and they've been brilliant on our previous builds I wanted to try and get as much light in here as possible so that's why we went for the skylight but obviously I needed some kind of exhaust fan so our plan is that we've got the vent in in the skylight and then we use the exhaust fan in the bathroom to draw the fresh air in and circulate it and it's worked a treat I can even show you today in these crazy temperatures But tonight's entertainment for dinner is fresh meat. And if you've not seen it, it's a TV series, three series, I think, in it? I think so. But we've already seen it once, but uh, we're watching it again, because it's a good day. Uh, it's good for a laugh, good, funny isn't it? One. Morning, everyone. 
it's minus 32, so I think there's only one thing to do. Are you ready? How cool is that? So you won't be surprised to know that the old front engine cover's gone on for the radiator and it is working hard. And also the, the preheat, the engine preheat is getting worked every morning as well. And one of our favorite messages that we get in a, in a week is that they watch our videos and they really want to come and do what we're doing because- Give it a go. Yeah, it's obviously, um, what we love to do is try and show you how beautiful the country is. And by the way, we're doing a rubbish job because we can't show you how beautiful this place is. You cannot just, capture it. Yeah, it's incredible. The only thing I would say of this trip is the first trip we've ever done where we really think we want to say how dangerous it can be as well. Yeah. So like in Australia, obviously you need to be really cautious of the heat, make sure you've got plenty of water and that you can get help. But out here, it can get to be a problem and it can get to be properly dangerous really quickly. So we don't in any way want to put people off or try and over dramatize it. But if you're going to come here, absolutely do it. Amazing experience, but just make sure you've done your prep because you might come and think, what are they on about? It's absolutely fine. It only gets down to minus 10 and you can get that consistent temperature. But what's really blowing our minds is how radically the temperature and the climate can change here. So we were looking the other day and within the same week, one place out here had been positive two degrees and minus 42 degrees. And it's just an unfathomable level of change. So it's just, yeah, you want to be ready for And it. when we broke down in the van the other day, we were like, right, we've got like a day and a half before we start running out of battery and things like that. So we was okay, but we were saying, can you imagine breaking down in a car out here yeah. in like minus 30 and things like that, or even it's, higher? Yeah, yeah. So you could get into like hypothermic state very quickly and very easily. So yeah, do come, just make sure you've done all your prep first. Next time you moan about the state of the bus stops in England, think yourself lucky. <laughs> So we've made it to a place called Kemi and we were speaking to a local the other day and he was telling us about the ice breaking ships. So obviously because the sea's frozen because it's so cold this time of year, the ships still need to be able to come in and out. So what they do is they send these ships out to break the ice. Because it's been such a cold winter this year, the ships have been going pretty much 24 seven. You can also do a tour on the ships as well, but it's about 300 pound a person. But we found a place where we can actually see the ship going by and get close enough to get some drone shots and things like that. And it's just absolutely incredible. You know what I'm loving about Sweden and Finland? All these little huts with fire pits all over the place. And just like in Luli the other day, this big old green box over here, full of pre-chopped firewood. So there's only one thing to do. Let's light a fire, make a brew, and watch the ships go by. Well, fortunately, my hot chocolate making skills are better than my fire making skills. They say there's no smoke without fire. Well, there was today. So we've done a Norwegian tool shop, but I think it's time to see what the Finns have got for us, eh? I need to apologise to all my Triple T fans, but today I think we'll make up for it. I could smell the tools. Well, I know it's not a tool, but you see these little beauties? you think these would be a toy. Well, this is what they actually use to do all their ice fishing. Now, this is the old studded push bike tyres, look. And they're just a tiny little stud, and you wouldn't think that they'd get that, uh, that much grip, but apparently they're incredible. Something tells me they get a lot of exhaust issues here, because I've never seen a selection of this in a hardware store for all exhaust parts. So they've got the flexi bits, joiners, mufflers, they've got all sorts of bends, all the clamps. It's like this, it's an emergency repair coolant hose and a flexible one as well. Like I've never even seen the way they've done that before, but look at them all. And obviously the reason they have to have it is because the conditions is so harsh that it's always testing your vehicles, as we've well shown you. And this, is the workwear glove selection, but you've also got camping glove selection, snowmobile glove selection, fishing glove selection, not to mention all the scraping the ice off the window selection. But my personal favorite 
is the Hi-Vis kids glove selection. And we couldn't not come to a snowmobile shop, could we? The overlanding six-wheeler quad bike snow plow, some sort of machine. So we were just chatting to the bloke inside and this is his skidoo and he was saying that he comes to work on it because otherwise it's a six kilometre drive or it's a three kilometre on this and then obviously it has a lot more fun. Also, they're already togged up for the cold really so it's not much difference going on this to going in a car and he was saying 75% of people that live in Lapland have got skidoos. The most common engine is a 854 stroke but they love a two stroke out here as well. A hundred mil socket. How much is it? 230 euros. What a bargain. Bargain? We found it. All the bungees on the reel, look. Even got different thicknesses. Check this out as well. They've even got all the ends. And I tell you what, I've never seen one like this before either. Look at the hook on that little beauty. It's a gem. <laughs> I'm absolutely mortified. He just walks up to random people in a shop in Finland, starts talking to them in English about bungees. Beauty little bungee, innit? Real good, eh? Mmm. Mm. I think he was a, a fellow bungee enthusiast. He was loving the talk. But I tell you what, you come to these countries and you think, oh, when I come here, I'm going to have all the toys. I learnt that lesson the hard way. I went to Australia and I thought, I'm going to have jet skis, boat, four wheel drives. Then you find out the price of them, because these snowmobiles here are anything from 10 to 20 grand. Morning everybody. What a morning and what a spot. We're still just using the Park for Night app to find spots and I have to say Finland are doing a great job of clearing their Park for Night spots. So thanks very much for that Finland. Um, I will say it's so cold that my boogers have nearly frozen immediately in my nose but we've had this amazing fog come in around this morning and it's like backlighting the clouds. It looks incredible and as much as we'd love to stay here all day we've got some driving to do so let's hit the road. But before we go, look at this. It's like the sun's like a flashing beacon from behind the clouds. Oh, she's gone again. It's almost like the clouds are coming for you. Oh, here she comes again. That is unbelievable. This place really is magic. average letterbox in Finland. I don't think they check their post very often. Should we see if anyone's home? <laughs> Put it on your head. <laughs> Go on. Oh, I'm like a beef eater. <laughs> Put it on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've made it to Koro Uima Gorge and we're off for a little hike, but I think I might want some more layers first. That's better. Let's go see what we can find. So on the note of rugging up, we've got something that we've added to our clothing selection. And I know that we went a bit overboard before we left, but we're glad that we did. And it's these little beauties. So they're like a mitt, but with fingerless gloves inside because our hands were freezing when we had to keep taking our gloves off to use the cameras and the phones and stuff. They've also got a little zip on the front so you can put hand warmer in, so they really do keep you warm. So if you use your phone a lot for directions or taking photos, I'd add these to the clothing list. So this hike is a 5K loop and it takes you through a gorge here. And there's two reasons it's famous really. The first is that the route that you walk on is an old pack 
course route from when they used to do the logging here. And there's loads of cool informational signs about how they made the sleigh tracks for the horses and I love all that stuff. You guys know I'm a history nerd. But it's also famous because there's three massive great big icefalls that you see as you walk past. And people come out here ice climbing, which is just a crazy sight to see. I will say I was so excited to see the ice falls after Norway. They were a bit of a letdown, even though they're still beautiful. I don't know, I think maybe we just got a bit spoiled in Norway. So normally when we come on these hikes, it just bores me to tears with all the facts on the boards. But today I found them quite interesting. So one of the uh, things she was telling me is when the horses used to do the logging here with the sleds, obviously when they used to pull the sleds, they used to make tracks in the ground. So what they'd do is they'd fill the sled up with water and drill holes in them, and the water would drip onto the tracks. And then it would create almost like a like a train track almost, so then there was less resistance for the sled to pull along. And I just love them sort of things. It's just a brilliant bit of engineering. I tell you what this place does win on though, it is definitely the snowiest place we have ever been. It looks like someone's opened a bag of cotton balls and just like thrown them at the tree. I feel like I'm on the set of a movie or something. And they haven't even had that much snow lately. Apparently over the next couple of days, we've got a big snowfall coming in. So I cannot wait to see that. So on the subject of lots of snow, we've been asked a lot of questions about our tyres and whether we get traction. So we've been driving now for about 5,000 miles in pretty much all winter conditions. And one of the easiest ways we find to see how much grip is out there is to do a quick brake test. So we'll get a long straight road, no one behind us, and basically I'll just anchor up as quick as I can and see how quick it stops. So if it's slippery, I'll slide, the ABS will cut in, whereas if I've got a lot of grip, it'll anchor up quite quick and you'll just feel it, it's real stable. And then that gives us a good gauge of how we're gonna drive to the conditions. So as you well know, we're out here on all-terrain Three Peaks tyres and they've done us proud, but where we have really struggled is on the sheet ice. So we've made a conscious decision to avoid coastal areas from now on and areas where they're likely to get a thaw. What I would say is to seriously consider getting studs if you've got your heart set on doing coastal routes or you're going to come in fringe seasons where you're more likely to get thaws. So as you can see, we're in a fair bit of snow, but let me show you how much traction we get. So as you can see, plenty of traction, but we're a rear wheel drive van and the only time we've really struggled is when we've tried to reverse back up the hill as if we were a front wheel drive van. And we've seen people out here with snow chains on, but they've only been front wheel drive cars and a front wheel drive van. But our friends are out here as well and they've got a front wheel drive van and they struggled from the word go. So they ended up changing to studs. So I would say that makes a huge difference. So I'll show you what it's like going up a hill now. So I know it wasn't the most scientific experiment in the world and I'm not saying you can't do it in a front wheel drive vehicle because I bet there's plenty of people that have done it and there's plenty of people that will as well. But we just thought it was something that's quite interesting for us to show you. So we found a little park up for the night and we're gonna leave you there. But before we do, I've got a bone to pick with you lot. So we hit 50,000 subscribers on YouTube the other day, which absolutely blows our minds. Like we're so, so grateful. We never thought we'd get to that. But um, to celebrate, we did a little poll and it was, doing a downward dog in a bikini, doing a reverse snow angel in a bikini, or John, leave Jess's clothes alone, you weirdo. Which I kind of just put in there because I thought, a bit of giggles. 44% of you voted for that. So I've listened to the people, no bikini. You've only got yourselves to blame. Just got to do a quick warm up first. Everybody. <laughs>